Credit goes to the producers, writers, and filmmakers who helped bring about this two-parter documentary. Easily one of the best wrestling pieces in existence. It is imperative you watch this. Both parts are free and they're online right now as of this video. They're online. Part 1 is on YouTube. Part 2 is on Vice TV's website. Hell, you know what? I will save you the time. I am going to link both parts, part 1 and 2, down below in the description. Check it out. I recommend you watch it first because there will be spoilers in this review. I kinda have to talk about what was said. And I don't feel right doing it if you haven't seen it. So please, for your sake, watch both parts. Unless you're someone who knows you won't be able to sit through it. In that case, I hope you stick around and we'll get through this together. So the documentary starts off recapping his career from his beginnings as Wild Pegasus in Japan all the way to his US run as Chris Benoit working in both major companies WCW and WWE. They brought in legends like Jim Ross and Chris Jericho to speak on his career basically telling what we already know. Benoit is, was, and might forever be one of the best technical wrestlers in wrestling history. Then they quickly move on to his relationship with woman aka Nancy Benoit. They talk about how they got together after Kevin Sullivan booked them in a program together. Now if I'm not mistaken Kevin and Nancy were an item during this time. I don't know how serious it was but they were a thing and Nancy ends up leaving Kevin to be with Benoit both on TV and in real life. Drama ensues. There's this big allegation that Kevin Sullivan used to actually hit Nancy, which led her to leaving him and getting with Benoit. Kevin Sullivan was contacted. They did call him in to speak on this, and he denied it, which doesn't look good for him. It kind of makes him look guilty. You also get insight from Chavo Guerrero and Vicky Guerrero, of course, relatives to the late Eddie Guerrero, who was closest to Benoit more than anyone else. You also get family members like Sandra, Nancy's sister, speaking on the subject. To me, the most striking interview comes from his son, David Benoit. He is a splitting image of Chris. He looks exactly like his father, for better or worse. And trust me, I will have a lot more to say about David later on. But let's focus on the relationship between Nancy and Chris because based off of what people were saying, they were a Disney couple. You could not split these two apart. They love spending time with each other. They love spending time with their son. They were what you would call the perfect couple. And it was hard not to see it knowing that both of them were just good people. And that's another thing. It's hard to say it knowing how it all ends. But during his time when he was alive, no one had anything bad to say about Chris Benoit. Everyone interviewed said the exact same thing. He was one of the sweetest, kindest, compassionate people you will ever meet. All he wanted to do was wrestle and spend time with his family and friends. He wasn't playing politics. He wasn't trying to put anyone down. He was willing to put anyone and everyone over while giving the shirt off his back to whoever needs it. I remember in 2007, when WWE wasn't that high on MVP, Benoit picked him out and said, let me put him over. And he made him a star. That's who Benoit was. He was your typical good-hearted Christian adult. Him and Eddie Guerrero. Speaking of Eddie Guerrero, this is when the documentary takes a very dark, depressing turn. One thing I will give credit to the makers of this wonderful piece of work. They don't shy away from those moments that could basically traumatize you. They let it all hang out and it's no more prevalent than when they touch on Eddie Guerrero's death. When they have Chavo Guerrero recount the events that led to Eddie's death of him finding his uncle Eddie laying on the floor in his hotel room him picking him up 
and him literally dying in his arms. You hear that and you go, oh my goodness! You feel for Chavo! You have to question if he's okay. I know this is about Ben Wild, but I'm sorry, is Chavo okay? Can we talk about that? Because that is some traumatizing stuff! Every wrestling fan knows where they were when Eddie Guerrero passed away. It is one of the saddest days in wrestling history, and every time we get a chance to rekindle, remind ourselves of how great he used to be, we take it because Eddie was one of those bright lights in the business. But I don't think we all truly understood how much Eddie meant to Chris until this documentary came out. Eddie was Benoit's everything because the moment he died, Benoit could not operate. The documentary talks about Benoit going to Eddie's house and laying on his side of the bed crutching his pillow and crying, begging for Eddie to come back. That is just sad. It was during this part of the documentary where I had to pause it and walk away. It was too much. When you hear the stories like that, you have to wonder what kind of mindset Benoit was in. We can talk about how much Eddie's death affected Vicky Guerrero and bless her heart for getting through that. We can talk about how much he affected Chavo and bless his heart but with Chris, it seemed on a completely different astro plane. He was extremely dependent on Eddie, almost to an unhealthy amount. And here's the thing, when Eddie died, Benoit never sought help. He never sought therapy, he never took time off for himself, he just kept wrestling, which honestly was the worst thing he could have done. Jericho and Chavo do talk about them reaching out to Benoit, trying to get him to open up and relax. But instead of opening up, he secluded himself even more. The loss of Eddie just took him out of reality. He was done. From my perspective, I think that was it. When Eddie died, Benoit was gone. He was not the same guy. He was no longer the man we all knew and respected. That man died the moment Eddie died. And from that point forward, it was a downward spiral until the incident. And here's the thing. The incident wasn't just something that came out of nowhere. There were some major red flags based off of the documentary. For instance, apparently Benoit and Nancy were fighting. Not just verbally either. Benoit hurt Nancy. Physically. It was so bad that Nancy had to leave him and go live with Sandra. Apparently, Benoit was abusing drugs, was drinking alcohol. He had very high, unusual levels of testosterone, which, by the way, WWE didn't notice. Yes, they had the wellness policy back then, but it was a joke. It wasn't serious. It's serious now. But back then, people peeled up and out of their minds can walk through that test and still go out and wrestle. You couldn't take aspirin and not pass the test nowadays. But back then, it was a joke. Benoit was not in a good place following Eddie's death. But week after week, he put his body on the line for our entertainment, doing headbutts, taking chair shots, using what he loved to hide those inner demons, to hide his inner turmoil. He never really got over his pain. And all of that, all of it, Eddie's death, pills, drinking, his deteriorating mindset, plus all the concussions he got from wrestling, all that came together. All of that manifested into what happened in 2007 when Benoit killed his son, Daniel, his wife, Nancy, and then committed suicide. I remember the exact day I was watching Raw and Vince McMahon came out to announce Benoit was dead. I refused to believe the stories that came out afterwards because there, there was no way a man that many were saying was the kindest, sweetest, nicest person you will ever meet could do such an act. And then evidence came out. It just became irrefutable. He had a towel around his neck. He hung himself using weights, Bibles next to his son, and his wife, as much as I would like to believe someone came in, killed them, and staged all of this, is pretty much impossible at this point. And I can recall back in the day, when I first started doing videos, 
I was one of the few people saying, you know what, how he ended his life didn't matter. This man is one of the greatest of all time. He should be in the Hall of Fame. Now that I'm a lot more older, a lot more considerate, and a lot more smarter, I cannot take that stance anymore. Not right now. And here's why. The documentary does talk about CTE. They do take a look at Benoit's brain and mention how it was so messed up. It mirrored the mind of a 90-year-old Alzheimer patient. The man was sick. No doubt about it. And if he had taken his own life, this would be a completely different story. He would be in the Hall of Fame. I think people would be a little bit more open to honoring his career. Problem is, he took the life of his wife and his son. Benoit had a choice. Nancy and Daniel didn't. He took the lives of two innocent people. No, he wasn't in his right mind. And yes, you can contribute that to Roy your age, CTE, some combination. The fact is, Nancy and Daniel are gone. And they don't deserve to be gone. Which is why now, I agree with Jim Ross. We cannot ever have someone like Benoit honored in the Hall of Fame. Because based off of his actions, not only were two innocents killed, that incident almost killed the wrestling business. It was hard to be a wrestling fan back then. News networks, critics, people who hated wrestling to begin with, hot on this and used it as a weapon to demoralize the sport we love. Whether he was in his right mind or not, his actions almost led to the death of a business which could have ruined so many lives. There would be no Sasha Banks, there would be no AJ Styles, there would be no Brock Lesnar, no John Cena, no Tommaso Ciampa, no Johnny Gargano, no NXT, no new generation if the media had gotten what it wanted. They wanted wrestling to die and they were weaponizing this incident to do so. It almost worked until WWE said no more. We're going PG. They were able to have that longevity to survive. But to do so, they had to erase Chris Benoit from existence. And credit to Vince, he came out and said it. We are going to erase Benoit from existence. And I don't know if there will ever be a time when the wrestling business can ever honor Benoit. We as fans can. We can sit here all day and talk about Benoit being one of the best technical wrestlers ever. But can you blame the wrestling business for choosing not to honor a man that almost led to his death? Can you blame Sandra for choosing not to forgive a man who took the life of her innocent sister? Can you blame Vicky Guerrero who chooses not to forgive a man who took the life of her best friend. A friend that during the time she lost her husband was helping her operate. Benoit's actions didn't just affect him. It affected multiple lives. It infected an entire industry. And the biggest victim of it all was his son, David Benoit. David Benoit was mocked, was bullied, and in a sense was almost erased from existence because of his last name. Not to mention the fact that he looks exactly like Chris. This kid has to live with the burden of being the son of a murderer. That is not fair. David did not ask for that. No one asked for that. But Benoit put him in that situation. Whether he was in his right mind or not, Benoit's actions cannot be ignored. And that is the biggest tragedy of this entire story. No matter how much of a good person he was, no matter how much of a great wrestler he was, what is going to define his life is how it ended. But there is hope for the Benoit name. And that hope is in David Benoit. David has come out and said he wants to be a wrestler. Why does he want to be a wrestler? To redeem the Benoit name. He reconnected with Chris Jericho. He reconnected with Sandra. He reconnected with Chavo. Most likely with Vicky 
as well. He has said he wants to have the same style as his father, wants to wear the same clothes as his father. He wants to become what Chris Benoit was before he lost Eddie, before the incident. I don't know if that's the right way to go about it, but who am I to tell him not to do it? He wants to right the wrong of his father. And you know what? If that's what he wants to do, he has my support. And let me just say this, I hope no one gives him crap about what Chris Benoit did. Do not use the sins of the father to punish the son. David Benoit didn't kill anybody. All David Benoit wants to do is not be scrutinized because of his last name. And I pray that he finds a way to bring some redemption to his family name. The least he can do is try. But yes, this documentary is easily one of the best produced, best written, best made pieces of work in all of wrestling. It's also one of the hardest to sit. So I want to get your thoughts now. Down below in the comments, tell me how you feel about all of this. Were you able to get through it without stopping? I couldn't. I had to stop a couple of times. It was hard for me. What stood out to you? What were some things you didn't know and then found out by watching? I really do think everyone should watch this. And if you did, I hope you were able to find some closure. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you for making me a part of your day. I hope you like the video. I hope you subscribe. And I hope you check out more content right here in Alex's world. But for now, that's going to be it for me. I'll catch you guys next time. This is Alex. Just Alex signing out. You take care of yourself. Peace. Oh,